All right, so from the previous video, if you'd watched it, we got the Pi connector set up and connected. So in this video, I want to show you the read capabilities in the product. So if you recall, we have the connection set up in here. When you go to create an input, we can read three types. We can read assets, we can read points, you know, the actual tags, and then we can read event frames. So in the beta, we have the ability to browse assets. You, you'll see us add the ability in the release to browse points as well. But if I hit the browse button currently, this works for assets. So what you'll see here is the databases that are configured in the Pi system I'm connected to. Uh, these are the same databases that if I'm in Pi System Explorer, uh, I see access to. And uh, I'm going to select Hi Byte, And from here, we have the ability to read uh, individual assets or branches and everything underneath, right? So what I'm going to do just, just for speed, because my EC2 instance is kind of slow in the demo. Oops, I'm going to back up. And I've got a sample project that I grabbed. And I can come down to the actual elements with some data. And I'm just going to import this B210 element. If we open up what that actually did, you can see in the configuration, we've selected the asset type. We've done a read. Uh, you've got to select the database that you're reading from. This will be a drop down, so you can select the databases that are there uh, come release. And then the query. And, right, and this is pretty much a verbatim query that you could write inside of Pi System Explorer. It uses the same syntax. Kind of natively, we expose that. So right now, this is just reading at this parent node uh, this individual element. And if I do a read, uh, it's got to initialize asset framework, so these reads can be a little slow. But you'll see uh, the asset as defined in asset framework for B210. All the attributes are available uh, in Pi. And if they if they don't have, like some of these have bad data uh, or authentication issues, if it's bad quality, we won't show it in the model. Uh, but for most of these, it looks like some data came through. The default install. And this is really flexible, right? Like I could come in here and say uh, template, I believe, is an option. You know, give me everything that admits to boiler. And I won't run this because this query, there's a lot of boiler elements. It's going to pull all of them in an array of every, everything that abides by this template. So that full query syntax is there kind of as you need it. I'm going to reset that. Uh, and the other thing about asset reads is I could back up the hierarchy and read everything under. Uh, New Green, Housing, Houston, you know, cracking process. I could read all the elements under there. So, you, you know, this is pretty much verbatim the Pi syntax, so it's pretty powerful. Uh, another input, common one, uh, is event frames. We haven't, I haven't done as much testing on these uh, to have, like, a, a good test data set. I think there is one in, in here. And, again, this is the Pi query syntax. Star just means give me everything. On a huge Pi system, this would probably be a disaster. But since I only have one event frame, uh, it works pretty well. But this could be the time bounds. It could be the template that the event frame is based on. And that data will come back with one or more uh, event frames in an array that you have access to. The last one are the Pi points. I'm just going to I'm going to save this one, call it a point read. And in here, you have the ability to read one or more points. So uh, I think in the end of the connection video, I showed you could read the current value of a sinusoid, the sinusoid point, right? But this could also be more than one. I think there's another one called sinusoid Z. Nope, U. There you go. So now I'm. it's the same, I think it's the same point internally, but just named differently. Uh, but you can see I have access to one or more. So I could group up a bunch of points that I want to read and execute it all in the single query and it returns back an object uh, with each point in it. So the other thing you can read in here is not just the current value. Uh, you can read the raw values. And in here, we expose that Pi system syntax as well. So if I want to read uh, from minus, from the current time, minus 10 minutes to current time, uh, and then these boundary settings, uh, if I want to read that, I'm pretty sure this is going to return Oh, it returned some data. So there were some some recent values. Looks like 12, 17, 11. yeah. So it returns the raw data over this uh, over this last 10 minute interval, right? And if there there were no updates since we're reading raw, it would show nothing. The other thing I can do is kind of interpolated total average these other uh, aggregate types. Is I could take the average value over the last 10 minutes in one minute chunks, 
and what you'll see returned here is the time range, right? So this is a time, this is an array of time bound objects. So it shows you the sample time, uh, and then the values of the two points, and then the next sample window. And these are separated by one minute interval. So if I change this to 10 minutes, uh, I believe I expect just one update, right? Because I'm I've got a time range with the interval uh, covering the entire time range. So this is just going to give me the average of 10 minutes. So you can do a lot of uh, cool things in here in terms of mixing and getting samples of data at regular intervals. You know, min, max, uh, percent good. I think it just comes back as 100 because my, my data is good. I got that going for me. Uh, yeah, so I think that's pretty much it. In a separate video, I'm going to show you this indexing capability, which is pretty cool. The ability to kind of index back and pull like really legacy data back into, into uh, Hybyte and then process that out to do like data transformations for uh, machine learning, et cetera. So I'll have a separate video on that. But uh, for now, that's inputs.